GarageBand then. Now, when GarageBand loads, it presents you with all of these options. And essentially, you can just leave it on the empty project and come down to the bottom right-hand corner here and <clears throat> select Choose. Now, we do need to choose a track type. And for the purposes of what we're doing, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so you can choose the microphone one, that's the default. So again, I'll choose create. And you can see that it creates a, an audio recording track here, which is fine. And later in our work, we can just remove, remove this track. What we want to do is activate the, the loops mode. Actually, I'm just going to shrink this up a little bit. Okay, so this symbol here looks a little bit like a roller coaster loop. That's the symbol for Apple Loops. Now, what you will see in this listing is a list of all the sounds that have been licensed for GarageBand by Apple and downloaded onto the laptop. And so depending on how up to date your downloads are, you may have more or less sounds and mine is fairly up to date. I don't have all the sounds because they keep releasing uh, new ones here and there, uh, but I probably have over 90% of them. And what you can do then is to hear a sound and just see what it sounds like, get an idea uh, for your creation. You just simply click it. And then a second click will stop the music. So you can see some of them are um, drum sets and And scroll down. There's the a synth sound, for example. And there's lots to choose from. Uh, some of them are more like sound effects uh, as opposed to music. Uh, but a more useful way to look at the sound list is by instrument categories. So if you click on the word instrument, you can see it'll bring up um, sort of categories of, of instruments. So why don't we start with, for example, guitars. I'll click guitars. And now what you see down here is a listing of just guitar related sounds. Okay, it's filtered out all of the other things. So I'll just randomly uh, try a couple of these. And... So I kind of like that one. So that might be a, a suitable one for a, a podcast or a newscast. So I'm going to just click and hold and then kind of drag this over into the main composition area. And there it is. Now, the thing that's cool about these sounds is if you scroll on top of it, you can see the little bracket there. And if I click and hold, I can now make that music longer. So let's see what else might go with that. Um, I'll just play that so you can hear it. So you can see it, it just, it, it is a loop. It's a little uh, repeated segment. So now, um, I'm going to click and go back to my list and maybe have a look at some percussion. OK, 
Okay, so let's say we like that one. I can just click and drag it over here. And again, and if I scroll on top, you can see the little arrow or the bracket there, which means I can uh, extend my pattern. Do that. And maybe one more sound. So I'll go back and click this off. Okay, clicked on the X there to cancel that last action. And now we need something. We've got a guitar sound and the percussion. So we need something to go with that. So maybe, maybe a bass. Now we're looking for something that's a little bit more energetic and uh, sort of suitable for a podcast newscast. Or... All right, let's try that one. So I'm going to drag it onto here. I'll start a new track. And here, maybe extend this right out to the end of bar eight. Let's see what that sounds like. So I'm going to go up here, standard. Uh, play control, so rewind to the beginning. Let's see what it sounds like. I don't really like that bass, so I simply can click on it. There, delete. Try something else. So you can see there's just a little bit of experimentation to get exactly what you want. All right, so that works better. I could probably spend more time fine-tuning it, but I'm going to just shorten this up here for texture. So, oops. Let's see what we got now. Okay, so that's workable for our demonstration. So you can see here now, I've clicked and highlighted this top one, and we don't need that, so just press delete, because uh, that was really just an empty track. Uh, so we're good there. And now, under Mix, I'm going to add a fade out. So it will self-determine a length to play full volume or the set volume I should say and then it will fade out note that you can by clicking and holding you can change the shape of this and adjust then how quickly or not so quickly it gets quieter so let's try that see what that sounds like so you can see there's a little experimentation here Perfect. And when it gets down to sort of the end of bar eight here, then that's where you would switch into the, the talking for the podcast or, or newscast. Now, final thing here is when you listen to this, you can adjust the volume of each track. So it becomes very customized. So for example, if we wanted to lower the volume of the bass part, but not the other parts, I can do that like that, and then of course you give it a listen. Maybe a little too quiet on the 
base, I'll bring it back just a little bit. Perfect. Now, that's kind of an overview. And uh, at this point, if we say we're going to go with that for our uh, music selection, we can go under the share menu down to export song to disc. So I'll choose that. Asks a name for your song. Uh, so let's call this. Uh, Call it podcast demo one. And where are we going to put it? I'm just going to put it on the desktop so it's easy to find. And I'm choosing a WAV file for the format. So that has a higher resolution. The music's got a better quality um, than an MP3, for example. So I'll say export. There doesn't take long when you're doing something that's only uh, 15 or so seconds. And if I jump out here, there's my song, uh, Podcast Demo 1. Now at this point, if you want, you can uh, go back and save your GarageBand um, file so that you can call it back up and and tweak it uh, so I'll just call this uh, podcast demo one save it in the garage band folder and that's fine and that's really uh, sort of covers all the steps that we need to do in terms of that. So when you're finished with GarageBand, you can exit, just choose quit, and your file here is saved on the computer, but it would be also wise to uh, save that in your Google Drive uh, so that you've got it and you can uh, use that for other projects as well. So I hope that was helpful and um, look forward to working with you on our projects.